passing with Britain's colonial past. But in a fascinating new article for The Telegraph, former Anglican Bishop of Rochester, Father Michael Nazir Ali, says critics of the Queen and her legacy have got it wrong. The Queen, he writes, was the face of decolonization, not the face of empire. He goes on to say, let us remember the Queen as someone who presided over the largely peaceful evolution of the empire into a commonwealth of sovereign nations held together by freely acknowledged ties of history, language and culture. Well, I'm delighted to say that Father Michael Nazir Ali, who's now a Roman Catholic priest, having converted to the Catholic Church, joins us live in the studio. Father, welcome to GB yes. News. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, what provoked you to write this article? Well, I'd seen the, the criticism in the New York Times, particularly, uh, not just once, but several times, and then in the Sunday Times, and I thought it needed a response um, because it was so off-beam, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Queen Victoria was really, I suppose, uh, you could say, the face of empire, yeah. consciously so. But uh, Queen Elizabeth II was, if anything, the face of decolonization. I mean, she presided over the end of empire, of the emergence of the new commonwealth, uh, from a commonwealth of seven nations to now, what is it, 54? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, an, that's amazing. I mean, we've got used to it, but it, it, it's amazing. And um, uh, she uh, valued the commonwealth. I mean, I know that for a fact. She once said to me, uh, the reason she valued the Commonwealth uh, was its diversity. Mm. Uh, and I suppose she was thinking of other organisations that might not be so diverse. Yeah, for sure. And she would be mortally wounded to have seen these comments about her following her passing. Well, absolutely. I, I think it was in very bad taste, um, to put it mildly. As well as historically inaccurate. And, and inaccurate, of course. Uh, completely inaccurate, because... The history of decolonization goes back a very long way to the American wars of independence, if you, of course. If you want that. But the interesting thing about the United States was that although they separated from the mother country, as it were, they kept its uh, legal, parliamentary, judicial and administrative systems. And that has been repeated throughout. Wherever countries have become independent, they have kept those good things that the empire brought them. Of course, uh, empires are not all virtuous. There are bad things. There were bad things about the British there Empire. There isn't a squeaky clean empire in history, is there? Not at all. And uh, if you're going to compare things, and the British Empire was by no means the worst of them. Um, and this needed to be said. I think it's transformation into a commonwealth of free nations who have freely decided to come and to stay together. It's quite remarkable. And even some countries like the Cameroons and uh, Rwanda, which were never in the British Empire, have elected to join. 